Diesel locomotives, they power the world. Without them, all this wouldn't be possible. But what makes a diesel locomotive tick? How do they work? And what are the different types of diesel locomotives? In this series, we're going to cover all three main types and how they get power from the engine to the wheels. In the previous video, we covered the operation of diesel mechanical locomotives and why they ain't very popular. Today, we're going to take a look at diesel hydraulic locomotives, a crazy machine that takes advantage of a fluid's incompressibility in order to transmit power. Unlike diesel mechanical locomotives, these engines are pretty darn successful, but they still ain't as good as diesel electric. Today, they're mostly used in Germany and Finland, though some neighboring countries and even Japan and India make regular use of them. Diesel hydraulic locomotives work well as road engines and switchers. They're lightweight and therefore well suited for mountain railways and lighter pound rail. There have been experiments with diesel hydraulic locomotives in the U.S. with companies such as Southern Pacific and Rio Grande attempting to use them, but the terrain and working conditions of the western U.S. was too much for these engines and they were soon taken out of service. While diesel hydraulic locomotives are very similar to diesel mechanical locomotives, especially in their final drives, there are several distinct differences. One, they have one or more torque converters instead of a fluid coupling. Two, if they do have a transmission, gear change is automatic and is achieved through hydraulics. And three, they ain't limited to low speeds or lightweight work such as switching. Another thing that's interesting about diesel hydraulic locomotives is that they can have some crazy powertrain configurations. You can have two engines and two transmissions, one engine and three torque converters, one engine and one transmission, etc. It all depends on the locomotive model and what type of work the locomotive will be doing. So, how does a diesel hydraulic locomotive use fluid to turn its wheels? Well, they work a little something like this. Like all diesel locomotives, power starts in the engine. From there, it goes into one or more torque converters. And from here, it can be transmitted to the wheels several different ways, again, depending on the locomotive model. In some engines, power comes out of the torque converter and goes straight to the gearboxes that power the wheels, with the torque converters acting as a transmission. We'll get into that in a second. In others, the power comes out of the torque converter goes into a four-speed automatic transmission and then into the wheels. And for locomotives or equipment that handle very low-powered jobs, such as maintenance away or light switcher engines, power goes into a hydrostatic drive, which is an axial piston pump that drives another axial piston pump, turning it into a hydraulic motor. The final drive for these locomotives is pretty much identical to that of a diesel mechanical model. It can be planetary sets, bevel gears, or rod linkage similar to what steam engines have. So, now that we know the many ways power can get to the wheels, how do these individual mechanisms work to transmit power? The torque converter, also known as a hydrokinetic transmission, is standard on all diesel hydraulic locomotives. It works very similarly to a fluid coupling which we just covered in the diesel mechanical video, but it has a few more parts that make it more complex. Just like the fluid coupling, you have two discs submerged in oil, surrounded by a steel case. The driving disc which is connected to the engine is called the impeller, and the driven disc is called the turbine. Between the impeller and the turbine you have the stator, which is affixed to a one-way clutch. The stator redirects fluid coming from the turbine back towards the impeller, which at the same time increases torque. And the one-way clutch keeps the oil in the torque converter from spinning the stator in the wrong direction, so that it always works as intended. One interesting thing is that when the turbine and the impeller approach the same RPM, the stator is allowed to freewheel. The stator and clutch are what differentiate a torque converter from a fluid coupling. Without them, a torque converter wouldn't be able to multiply torque. Many diesel hydraulic locomotives use a series of torque converters as a transmission. 
They achieved this by varying the slip between the various input and output shafts, or locking up the torque converters altogether. You see, when a torque converter is full of oil, the turbine can pretty much spin at the speed of the impeller. But if you take some of that oil out, there ain't as much fluid to push on the turbine, so it can't rotate as fast as the impeller. The act of the two shafts spinning at different speeds is what you call slip. On something like a car, this would be a big issue, but on a locomotive, this is how varying speeds are achieved. In some models, the fluid in the torque converters is drained out completely once the locomotive reaches a certain speed, or the input and output shafts reach a certain RPM. With no fluid to drive the turbine, this means the input shaft of the transmission and the output shaft of the engine have to be connected somehow in order to maintain power transmission. This is usually done by locking the turbine to the back of the torque converter casing through the use of a solenoid and a clutch, creating a one-to-one -one direct drive. I'm sure there's other ways to achieve lockup, like maybe using a synchronizer and a hydraulic piston to spline the input shaft to the transmission to the output shaft of the engine, but it was very difficult to find any information on locomotive lockup torque converters. An important thing to note is that multiple torque converters can be locked at once. If all of them are locked, then you have direct drive, but if you lock one and halfway drain another, then you have finer control over your speed and torque, which is exactly what a transmission provides. Not every diesel hydraulic locomotive has a transmission, but for the ones that do, here's how they work. Automatic transmissions use planetary sets instead of more traditional gears. Planetary sets have two inputs and one output. You can power the ring gear and get an increase in torque at the cost of speed, or you can power the sun gear and get an increase in speed at the cost of torque, and your output is the planetary gears. The input is changed through the use of hydraulically activated clutch packs. The transmission has a hydraulic pump. It can either be internal or external. No matter its location, the oil it moves around not only lubricates the transmission, but also travels through a series of oil passages that help shift the gears. Inside those passages, there's valves which are set to open at a certain PSI. When the pump provides enough flow and the restriction of the oil passage provides enough pressure, those valves open allowing the oil to flow through the previously blocked passage. That high pressure oil then pushes on pistons inside the transmission, which lock and unlock one or more clutch packs. The clutch packs in turn change the input of the planetary sets, changing the gear ratios inside the transmission, and therefore changing the speed and torque of the output shaft. Automatic transmissions don't grind gears because all the gears in there are already meshed together all that's happening when the transmission shifts gears is a change in where power is being applied, whether it's going to the rain gear or to the sun gear. As for the hydrostatic drive mentioned towards the beginning of the video, that's basically another version of a fluid coupling, but with variable speed. The fluid being moved by the driving pump pushes on the driven pump, or motor in this case, causing it to move, and the swash plate at the end of the driving pump can be adjusted for different speeds. When the swash plate is moved, it adjusts the stroke of the pistons in their bore, causing them to move more or less fluid. All the way back, and the pistons are moving as much fluid as possible. Vertical, also known as neutral, and the pistons are moving no fluid at all. And all the way forward is reverse. After power comes out of the transmission, torque converter, or hydrostatic drive, it goes into the final drive and into the wheels. Well, there you have it. Whether a locomotive is using torque converters, an automatic transmission, or a hydrostatic drive, they all use the incompressibility of fluid to transmit power. Thanks for watching. If y'all enjoyed this video, consider checking out some other ones of mine. Also, maybe pass yourself by the merch shop. We got a new t-shirt design coming out soon. Anyways, till next time.